Welcome to the Curriculum Committee meeting. Um, my name is Ann Parry. I'm the Curriculum Committee Chair. And also joining us is Dave Cronenberg, another committee member. Um, the topic of tonight's meeting is related to our vision and mission <coughs> statement. Um, we're going to be talking about the degree programs. And just to give you guys some context, our last meeting, we set the agenda and listened to what the, the board and the, you know, our feedback from the community, what do we want to hear about? And that's something that is shifting this year on the curriculum committee is that we're in exploring topics and tonight we're going to talk about the degree programs. So turn it over to Dr. Collins. Good evening. Um, thank you everyone for attending this evening. We are going to be discussing our degree programs at Kennett High School. And I am going to turn it over to Dr. Barber, who leads this effort at our high school to kick the meeting off. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Thank you, Dr. Collins. I think if we go to the next slide, we have a little summary. If I'm not mistaken. Great. So um, I just am, am really excited and enthusiastic about this initiative and our degree programs. This is something that uh, really hits home for me and is personal because uh, some of you may be aware, some not, that I was not an education major. I was actually an accounting major and uh, no offense to Mike, who is a, a CFO um, and Mark, who is our CFO, um, but I was an accounting major uh, and went through uh, my collegiate career uh, being involved in internship opportunities and then realized I loved teaching and coaching more than I loved the art of accounting. But it, of course, I had already gone through my collegiate and uh, undergraduate career and spent all of that money to determine that I wanted to go a different course and a different path. Uh, and I'm so excited because when I look around the room and see former students like John Trainer, who has now just joined us, a social studies teacher at, at Kennett Middle School and joined our staff, I, you know, he was a student of ours and just a wonderful, wonderful person. Or TJ Augustine, who was a student when I was a high school principal, uh, just having that opportunity to make that difference and provide students now currently at our high school with the opportunity to pursue their passion so when we talk about our degree program, we're really talking about personalized learning and really trying to, to make sure that we uh, embody and provide opportunities for students to pursue their passion, to really want to grow in a specific area. Um, yes, we have general education requirements and our students will, will continue to meet those general education requirements as set forth by our school board. But as you can see on the slide, <clears throat> what we're doing is really individualizing that learning path for students. Uh, we have a number of programs, but they wouldn't be possible without our dynamic teachers who really are teaching things that they love, um, as well as our partnership with some of our folks around the table that will be introduced shortly, our business partners, and together it really is a collaborative team. Uh, and we really are pushing forward to give everyone the opportunities to pursue that passion. Jill, we're going to have you up here. So absolutely, another member of our team. So. Yep, at the table. Thank you very, very much. So uh, we have a number of folks uh, uh, that are with us this evening, and I do not want to speak often, but um, this is an opportunity to dovetail our academic coursework with exper experiential learning and hands-on experiences that our staff and our business partners are going to provide our students. It is unique uh, to our area. When we speak to others in our field, they are very intrigued. Um, and want to learn more about some of the things that we are doing with clustering courses, providing dual enrollment opportunities for our students, and of course, looking at internship opportunities where we are gaining that hands-on experience in the work environment, and also in turn supporting our local businesses uh, with, the, with the job force um, and, and things that we really know and value and, and want to support them to give back. So. Um, as you can see, a number of things to talk about tonight, but as we move forward, nobody really came here to listen to me. So I'm gonna be quiet and we're gonna move forward with hearing from our teachers 
uh, and our business partners. So I think the next slide. Yep. I'll move it forward. I just want to chime in for a minute. Please. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone here, I should have I should have started the meeting with this. No, so this is a pretty informal meeting. Um, ask all the questions you have um, and share out anything you want. Uh, we have Dr. Garrett, our board president, I know via Zoom. Uh, so if she has any questions, I know we'll get some help down there to, um, to answer that. So feel, this is more like our professional learning community as a curriculum committee. So feel free to ask all the questions that you have um, and um, maybe that we don't have the answers, but maybe there are things for us to think about in the future too. Um, and so also the other thing that's exciting about this that I know Dr. Barber um, won't uh, toot his own horn, but everyone around this table continues to grow our partnership. So you'll see, we have a slide here. We are almost to 40, I would say a little bit pushing over that partner, business partners in our community and continuously looking for um, more of those partners. So. It's a really exciting endeavor, but I wanted to start with that. So feel free to ask questions, um, and then this will be our open discussion for the evening. I'm going to move this along, um, and then why is it this thing? Okay, good. So currently, um, and then we'll I'll turn it right over to our teachers. These are the programs that we currently have offered at our high school. Um, and so we have a few of our educators here this evening. And so I would like for them to share just um, informally, you know, the program that you're in and how it's going. I know Mr. Bosch um, is probably, you're in year two. And so uh, maybe we can start with you and then we can go to Gretchen and DJ and they can talk about their program. So we'll turn it over to you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to come out and speak tonight. So my name is Scott Bosch. I'm the media communications teacher at Kennett High School. Um, it was funny listening to Dr. Barber tell his story because uh, that's the same story I have. I was a film major um, 20 plus years ago at Temple University, and education wasn't even uh, it wasn't even anything I ever thought about um, until I got a job doing um, media work for the school district that I graduated from and had the opportunity to work with kids and just loved that way more than uh, making my own stuff. And so also did a nice roundabout way of getting into to teaching. But, um, but I did love my experience being a film major at Temple University from 1996 to 2000. And so I guess about two years ago now, three years ago now, uh, when um, Dr. Ritz came to me and asked me if I would be interested in putting together a program for the Pathways program, I was very intrigued by it uh, because I, I already think that prior to my arrival, we had a, a, a terrific media program at Kennett, uh, and I was very excited to get the job to be able to continue that tradition. Um, but my classes are kind of taken by all four grades in any order or anything like that. So the idea that I could kind of take my program and make it specialized for kids who really wanted to do what I wanted to do when I was their age uh, was an exciting thing. Because I, I can tell you that when I went to high school, there was one video production class. So if there had been six, I would have taken six. Uh, so the idea that I, you know, we could really kind of help kids who really did know what they want to do, specialize in that now and get that huge jump on, I, I mean, basically had I taken the, my version of the Pathways program when I was a kid, I would have known everything that I learned in my freshman year at Temple. I mean, that's really kind of what we're, what I'm going for here is to have kids go in really with that base of knowledge already. Um, and, uh, and also get a taste of a lot of different things. So the way I've structured the program, they get a little, a, a nice, overview of all kind of video production stuff freshman year then they get to try out some journalism sophomore year some filmmaking junior year and then senior year kind of choose whatever that path was that they were most interested in um and um kind of do like a senior thesis project um and that doesn't even include the internship which is uh, an incredible opportunity for them because the fact of the matter is they all want to be the next great filmmaker right but that's not necessarily the reality and so um, the internship is going to give them the opportunity to try different jobs in that field, though, to see are these are, are these jobs that I'm interested in. And so what I really love about the program is kind of like twofold. One is that students really get to try out what they think they're interested in before they start investing a lot of money in it. And if they are interested in, if they do love it, 
then they've got a real leg up on every other student who's going to study it at, at the collegiate level. Or they realize they maybe don't like it as much as they thought they did, and they save themselves a lot of money. And then take the four-year university out of the equation. Kids are also going to leave our programs being able to go into the workforce, having skills that if they decide not to go into a four-year program or even a two-year program, they'll have skills to, to get a job out of school, which I think is pretty great. In terms of my program itself, I am in the second year. So like I said, freshman year is just about base skills, camera skills, editing skills, things like that. Uh, uh, sophomore year is uh, all about journalism, and we're trying to explore it, I'm trying to explore it in a different way than I had in the past. In the past, it was a broadcast journalism class, so it was all about just um, like video news stories. I'm trying to broaden that a little bit to also include photography, um, modern digital journalism in terms of websites, uh, social media, things like that. So I've kind of broadened that for them. That junior year is going to be about filmmaking, so they're going to take a theory class and a production class. Um, and so right now I've got, I guess... I would have to double check to make sure that this is accurate, but I want to say about 12 students in sophomore year who have taken that base class last year and are in the uh, journalism class now, and they're doing really great work. Uh, and about eight students that are freshmen, I think it's eight, it might be, I, I might be off by one or two there, uh, who are coming in as freshmen right now. Um, and I think that they're, I, I think that they're having a pretty positive experience so far. Um, I know I am. I, I'm really into this program, and I think it offers just um a really great breadth of opportunities for our students and i hope that we see more and more students join the program as as it continues to grow um i don't know if i was specific enough so if anybody has any questions i'm happy to answer them but i also don't want to take up too much time plus gretchen brought props <laughs> so <laughs> well with that segue we'll branch right into gretchen there you go and do you want to introduce yourself gretchen and you'll have to hit the button there you go my name is Gretchen Peterson. I'm the agriculture science teacher. Um, my path was similar. Uh, education was my second career. My first career, I was a gardener. So um, I'm thrilled to be here um, starting the ag program. And I'm starting it from scratch. So last year, I was working on um, curriculum and materials, things that we would need to be successful. And this year, I'm teaching um, introduction to agriculture. Um, I'm giving the students a peek into different strands of agriculture, such as natural resources, plant science, animal science, agribusiness. We have two hydroponic systems up and running. Um, we're growing lettuce and herbs. We have some raised beds outside where we are just finishing up our fall crop of lettuce, beets, turnips, Swiss chard, cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. Um, we had a student who was in Mr. Zitarelli's biology class, her, his ninth grade class, and they were um, chitting potatoes. And I had to actually put the word up on the board. It's C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G. <laughs> um, the students were like, what? But um, they were sprouting potatoes, which is called chitting. And um, so the student was like, hey, can we try to grow these? I'm like, yeah, we can grow them. So um, it was a neat connection with the biology class. And now we have potatoes growing in five gallon buckets under lights in our classroom. And the kids are excited to harvest them in a few months when they're ready. Um, the food from our gardens is used in both of our culinary classrooms, which has been really neat this fall. Um, and we also just started to sell it. So we've opened it up, um, selling it to faculty and staff, and the um, response has been very positive and exciting, and the kids deliver it, and um, they, of course, harvest it, and they weigh it, they bag it, um, we stick it in the fridge, and then we deliver it. So that's been a really great experience. and. I'm hoping that that leads into, um, there's a possible um, for next steps, a partnership with the future Kennett Community Grocer. They would like um, Kennett Ag students to actually grow all of their produce and then they would purchase it from us. That money would go back into our program and they could advertise at the grocer that we were growing it. Um, I think it would be an amazing opportunity and also it would give the kids a look into that business side and selling and it would give them a place for an internship or a job. Um, so that's on the table. It's something that's um, out there as a possible next step. We're also looking for literally a place to grow. We are parking lot locked. So um, we're talking with Sheila and Anson B. Nixon Park about possibilities of using space there so that we can grow um, and have 
a greater space to grow, grow in numerous ways. So um, the community connection that's out there that's possible, I think is really a positive. Um, to connect the high school to the community, to have advertising on both sides, for the kids to know who they're growing for, for the community to know that we grew for them. Um, I think it'll make our program really strong. Um, and the next course that I'm planning is um, plant science or horticulture science, whichever it ends up being called. And I'm gonna take the courses in the direction that the kids are interested in. While horticulture is my strength, the kids are interested in small animals. So, you know, I need to learn some more about small animals and possibly um, create a course that is something that they are interested in taking because it's about them. So um, that's where I am, that's where we are. All right, DJ. All right, so hi everybody. My name is DJ Augustine. I am leading the real estate and tourism program at Kennett High School. Uh, just a little bit of background on the program. I guess it was uh, spring of 2021, Dr. Ritz uh, kind of approached me about if there was any interest about um, developing some sort of program, and I was like, yes, but I don't know what we can do at the moment. So it was one of those things that we kind of workshopped around some things. But the central idea was that we want the education that students are going to be getting at Kennett High School to be meaningful and something that they can take beyond our building. Uh, and we started talking about the fact that there's a lot that our community really has to offer. And we started tossing some ideas around and I was just like, all right, if we want students to come away with some sort of skill set, let's lean into the fact that this isn't as, this, as the Kennett Brandywine Valley area, it's a highly attractive area for uh, not only people to be moving into, but also for people to visit. Uh, so this kind of is where this whole idea of real estate and tourism came in. How can we properly educate students on where we live, the importance and the history that exists here, as well as kind of creating a hybrid program that takes social studies and takes business classes and puts it together so that we can successfully market or sell kind of the story of our area. Uh, so we ended up talking about this program, putting it together uh, with the goal that students that would graduate from this program would be the first students in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that would have the opportunity to graduate from Kennett High School as licensed real estate agents. So that's kind of the big end goal in sight that this program has. Uh, where we're at right now is in the kind of beginning steps of it. This is year one for, for my program. Uh, in my classes that I'm teaching right now, uh, which is semester based, I've got about four students, and then I've got to double check on my spring semester numbers. But we are learning about our area. The class that's being offered in year one is called the History of Kennett Square, and it focuses on the fact that going back to the foundation of, of this, uh, of Pennsylvania, there is a history that's tied to our area that goes from the late 1600s all the way up until present day. And it's highly integral in talking about, frankly, a lot of American history. Uh, so we've, in the past couple of weeks, we've gone through the Revolutionary War and it's our impact on, on the Revolutionary War. We've talked about our extremely important uh, role in the Underground Railroad. And now we're talking about the fact that right, our school district is right, one of the, the first and the most kind of prominent examples of consolidated public education uh, during the early part of the 20th century. One of the things that's really unique about this is that students are actually getting to what I call do history, that they're engaging in what would almost be the equivalent of like a science class with science labs. I'm calling them history labs where students are getting to actually engage with sources. Dr. Uh, Blakey was so kind to let me dig through the uh, district office archives uh, last week to pull materials for students uh, so that they could then not just hear me or read from a textbook that says, oh, well, this happened at this particular time, but students are crafting arguments and they're crafting stories based on the materials that they're given. And it's a much harder task to do, to do than just reading from a textbook, but there's meaning that's coming out of this. Students 
unprompted uh, have told me they're like this is this is my favorite class, and I think that's what all of us and the the teachers that are aren't present uh, as well. That's the big goal of this program is to make sure that students are receiving authentic uh, learning experiences while they're at Kennett High School. So I'll also wait for any questions, I guess, with that, so just to save some time. No, thank you. Thank you, three of you. Um, any questions for our teachers? I have more of a comment. Um, maybe it's a question. I just hear from all of you this kind of relevant, collaborative, community building aspect to what you're developing and that you're starting to think about connections um, with other content areas and thinking about how we can make this current day for students. You know, I think back to my own high school education and each content area was a block of time and they all you know, I left math and I went to social studies and there was no connection to me. I did not see one. I don't think there was one. <laughs> but it sounds like you're starting to do this work. Is there, as you're developing these programs, have there been other colleagues that you've branched out to and used as resources along the way? Do you have a team that you're working with? I can speak to that a little bit just with the biology department. Mm -hmm. um, there are two teachers who teach um, natural resources, um, environmental science. And so um, that's a strand of agriculture. So I've reached out to them, um, tried to figure out if there's holes that I could fill with an agriculture class that aren't being taught um, or you know how we could work together. Um, even finding spaces, um, like there's land behind legacy fields that the district owns, it's a wetland. and talking about going down there and we took soil samples from down there and I asked the other teachers have they do they use it do they know about it um I'm not even sure they knew it was Kenneth's like property but so just trying to you know make conversations happen and branch out use each other for help <laughs> that's really interesting speak on that a little too uh I've had in kind of the the early development of the the program I have had I believe all of the business teachers at some point in some capacity have reached out and they're like, let us know how we can either assist or be a part of this. And I was like, all right, that's great. I got to figure out what we're going to do with year one at least, but hold tight because I am going to um, look to kind of make those connections. So there is, we've got a great faculty, I think, at the high school. So I think that makes for easier collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, just real briefly, I guess um, I've ha I had a lot of conversations with Miss August, uh, who was in the business department prior to being the assistant principal this year, uh, and we we talked a little bit about some cross curricular opportunities in the future. I, I think what we're going to find is that as the programs kind of grow a little bit, and more of these opportunities for like selling things uh, would then, you know, filter down to us to to market and, and things like that. So I, I think as the program grows, we're going to see a lot more cross curricular. Um, opportunity, I, I think. Yeah, it definitely. Just from hearing you all speak, it just sounded like this is the beginning of starting to make connections and really connecting the high school to the community and making education relevant for students. So it sounds amazing. I want to go back <laughs> to your student. Thanks for being here tonight and taking time out of your. And, and that goes for all of the new teachers here as well. I, I know you sort of have to be here, but thanks for being here anyway. Um, but uh, as far as the degree programs, you're speaking with a passion and with an excitement that I, I really, I'm sure comes through to the students. I know we knew, need to do a little bit better job of marketing the degree programs. Um, it, questions from parents are usually, what the heck is this? And what is it gonna do to my kid's education? And you know, it's a positive, right? It's not anything other than a positive. Do the kids get it? Do they understand where, where they're going with the program? I think that's a great question. Um, I, I think some of them do and some of them don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, just being totally uh, honest. I think, that's why yeah, we're here. Yeah, no, I, I think some do and some don't. Um, but I, I think for those who 
don't. I think that's just on us uh, on us to make sure that they do understand what it is that 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 they have signed up for and um, what the benefits are uh, to it. Mm -hmm. um, and the students that I've had are very interested in the in the content. And so, um, you know, like I lost one student, but that was because we didn't have an a fine arts program when he was a freshman and he felt like that was a little bit more suited to him. So it's not like he dropped out of the pathway, a new pathway opened up for him that he was like, wow, well, well, actually I love your classes, but that's probably more in line with what I'm doing. So I don't think it takes too long for them to get it, but I don't know that they all necessarily got it at first. At least that was uh, that for me last year. Now for both uh, Gretchen and DJ, the program was established a full year before they got them. So I wonder if maybe it's a little different. I don't know. I would still say it's it's a mix where there's some kids that have figured it out. Uh, they are ninth graders, and I think it's what we eight, nine weeks into the school year, too. I think some of them are just overwhelmed yeah, at fair, the fair entirety point. of the, uh, <laughs> the high school experience. And like you're like, OK, well, you're, again, you're going to get to pick classes. We're, we're going to be able to shape your schedule a little bit more flexibly next year. And I think that whole entrance into high school thing is also a factor in them not being completely sure about what, what the programs all entail. I appreciate that. As you may know, I have personal experience with the expressions on those ninth graders' faces. So, <laughs> Mr. Cronenberg, one of the things that we're uh, appreciative of, the board did support an additional counselor at Kennett High School, and Dr. Cellini has worked to fill that position. Um, and we are excited to bring that person on board uh, and really as the college and career counselor to drive home and, and do some additional marketing to our students. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about that opportunity uh, and that person you know, starting with us. Great, that's great news. I know positions are hard to fill, so congratulations, Dr. Sweeney, for every position that we fill, not just that one. But uh, no, again, thank you. I think that this adds to what makes Canada a special place. So thanks for telling us about it. So the programs up on the board right now are the eight that we currently have. And we have two additional programs that we are exploring and moving toward, uh, which are on the next side, next slide. One is our public safety degree program, and another is our teacher pipeline. Uh, we do have a couple updates. I uh, was able to meet uh, with regard to the public safety program. Gabby didn't know we were getting a lot of homework when we met, but nonetheless, um, we are in the design phase and sort of outlining what our essential components could be in our introduction introductory course. And we're preparing that, getting ready to go to the teaching and learning team uh, for review and curricular development. Um, so that will be forthcoming. Uh, in addition, our teacher pipeline, uh, Dr. Blakey, uh, Ms. Laws and I um, were able to uh, meet with some of the folks at Westchester University. Uh, last week and um, what is terrific about that program is tomorrow their students who are student ambassadors are coming on campus to speak with some of our potential teacher candidates uh, and, the, and the teacher pipeline program that we have developed in partnership with Westchester University. In addition, right now we are on the books for the 14th Miss Laws, I believe, for a visit from the Acting uh, Secretary of Education, uh, Secretary Haggerty. Um, as well to learn more about the teacher pipeline and the model that uh, that we in partnership that we've created with Westchester University to provide opportunities to our students through, uh, I'm hesitant to use the word, an eight-year partnership. How's that? Because if I use residency, it means something different for funding. So I'm going to be really careful. It's an eight-year partnership starting really in our June, junior year of high school where we're going to have uh, a group of folks supporting teacher candidates as well. Um, so those are two programs that are in uh, the development phase and ready to to move uh, to implementation uh, to meet the needs of our students. So hopefully uh, by this time next year, we can say we're up to 10 degree programs um, at that time. And we'll continue to survey our, our students and see um, what interest areas that they have. So, but. If I can add on really quick to Mr. Cronenberg's point, um, I think what will also help our students kind of get where we're headed is if as we start younger. So our middle school has started alignment with the cycles program to align with a lot of the work, but we've also started that at the elementary level with our STEM um, 
positions that are in addition to, and we'll continuously, as we, once we get our degree pro programs established at our high school, we need to start pulling them, those things down into our elementary because in, by fourth grade is where we lose students. So our goal is to start our students' interest earlier, so start the exposure earlier. So that is what we will continuously look to do is to morph our specials at the elementary to align with what we're doing at our high school so that we have this continuous flow of students into, you know, peaking the interest of our students. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. That is our goal. It will be more of a K-12 alignment. So we start earlier um, and engage our kids in their interests. Thank you, Dr. Collins. And one of the questions from uh, Dr. Garrett has to do with internships, which is a great segue uh, into uh, the co-most important people in the room, our teachers and our business partners. Um, so I'm gonna ask our business partners if you could, there is sort of a squiggly line that looks a little like a microphone. If you can make sure that is on, if you would take a moment to introduce yourself. Um, and then we're gonna ask our business partners to, to talk a little bit about their experience as well. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for um, having me today. My name is Beatrice Cordova. Um, I am a former Kennett High School alum um, over 10 years ago. I don't want to put ages <laughs> of my name, but um, some of you may already know me because my mom is Guillermina. She's been the Kennett High School custodian for over 20 years. Um, and I love my mom. She's one of the smartest women that I know. Um, and I, I bring her up because my parents didn't have the opportunity to go to school past middle school. So having this kind of program really, you know, hits home for me because had they had the opportunity, I think things would have been really different, not only for them, um, for us, and also for the community. So I'm a big, big supporter of this um, program, although I missed the last two meetings. I am so sorry. I was really busy. Um, this is, you know, the first time I'm coming this year, so I'm really happy to be here um, and again, you know, hit the ground running. Um, I personally have an experience with kind of high school because my teachers were so amazing that I was able to do the TCH program um, with the Health Career Academy, which gave me an introduction to nursing. So my background is I'm a level one um, trauma registered nurse. Um, I work for Christiana and I also um, the director of a resident care at Crosslands and um, Kennett Square. So large successes. I owe them a lot to Kennett High School and everyone who supported me and, you know, believed in me. Um, this program has potential for, you know, I know it's not up there right now, but I see healthcare careers, um, especially given the the world we're in right now, um, you know, post pandemic or in pandemic still, um, we have lots of potential to teach our children and, um, you know, support the community, which is also one of the biggest factors we have here. Um, so this is, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to support in any way. Um, I love teaching. I love teaching nursing students. I love, um, you know, being involved with the community. Thank you. Beatrice, we absolutely agree. Allied Science is on its way um, <laughs> and we'll be looking for your direction and support with that. And yes, your mom is one of the smartest people I've ever spoken with. So thank you. Is it working? Can everyone hear me? Perfect. Okay. Uh, my name is Gabby Ratliff. I work for Longwood Fire Company, which is a nonprofit that provides fire and EMS services to the six municipalities. Um, that serve the area. So um, we are the only EMS uh, agency for the Kennett area and Unionville region, um, followed by Avondale and uh, Concordville to this to the sides. Um, we just started talking about so it's very much in its infancy, um, working on the public safety program, but I think it's going to be something that is so beneficial to both students and uh, public safety sectors, both uh, well, all fire, EMS, and police. Um, a little bit about my background, I worked for the county, so I worked in emergency management, and uh, my approach was very much holistic, so I looked at all of the sectors of public safety, um, including public works, because they all work together, kind of like um, physics and chemistry and biology all kind of 
intertwine to make for specializations. Uh, you know, public safety fields are not much different than that. So I think the younger that we can start to instill that, um, making those connections in students, it would be invaluable to them. I think where I've seen a lot of emergency situations break down is when people are siloed and they don't, they only understand fire or they only understand EMS or they only understand law enforcement. Um, and the more that we can integrate that, uh, the better off everyone will be, us, students, communities, everyone. I think also an important point um, that Beatrice touched on is uh, crisis. So obviously with COVID, we've had um, a crisis of, I don't wanna call it attrition, but burnout um, with our EMS providers, both EMTs and paramedics. Um, with inflation rates, it's easier to get a job doing something that's less stressful than, you know, delivering service on a cardiac arrest um, than what people are doing for the compensation that they're getting. Um, that's a crisis that we're seeing at the volunteer level in fire as well. Generally in the past or historically in Pennsylvania, particularly, it was almost all volunteer. It was almost all, um, I don't want to say amateur, but it certainly wasn't professional. That's no longer the case. And that's not meeting the needs of the communities um, anymore. It's becoming much more professionalized. Um, and so I think that this program is a really novel um, place that we can start to instill more professional type skills in fire EMS and law enforcement. Um, so I see a lot of values. I see, I see a lot of um, uh, potential in the program. So thank you. Hi, um, thanks for including me. I'm Sheila Tkavik and I work for the Kenna Area Park Authority that owns and operates Anson Phoenixon Park which is 106 acres of open space and um, recreational facilities in Kennett Square. We are really excited about the potential for an ag program. I'm excited for the potential of other, the, the real estate and um, tourism, the filmmaking for marketing and social media. Um, as a municipal authority in PA, when they created the park, there was a plan to fund the park that million dollar fund never was created. So we operate 106 acres that are open every day from dawn to dusk with three employees and a volunteer board. Um, we just had a public meeting last Tuesday to discuss our plans to uh, revitalize and um, refurbish the waterworks buildings in the park that are more than 100 years old. And one of the things that unsolicited, well, it was solicited. We broke people out into session, to groups so that they could talk about what they thought was the best use for the park and these buildings. Um, one of the groups said that they would like to see aviaries. Um, one of the groups said that they would like to see some type of small animals in the park. Now we're not a farm. We are not Longwood Gardens and we're not a zoo. However, we have 106 <laughs> acres. That's just on the other side of the borough. And I could see a chicken coop there. I could see some goats. Um, and I can see, <laughs> um, I can see all kinds of, that property was the former Chambers family estate and they were a very industrious family. They had sawmills and they had woolen mills and he dabbled in asbestos um, and, and paper making. Um, I can see that property being used for multi-purposes again to educate the students to get them anchored into the community in a way that they have a vested interest in the future of Kenneth Square and the surrounding area um, so that when they do get a degree they don't move to New York City or Los Angeles or Miami they come back home after they travel around um, I'm really thrilled about it personally I'm really excited about the the thought of having some volunteers in the park doing some of the, the work that we just don't get to. And there's endless potential. And I think it would benefit us, it would benefit the students, it would benefit the community as a whole. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it off. My name is Mike Gilmartin. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of M. Davis & Sons. 
we are an uh, industrial contractor, which means we do a lot of mechanical and electrical work. And we also have four fabrication shops in the Mid-Atlantic area. Uh, we are Delaware headquartered, but we recently sold three buildings in Delaware and moved into a property in Kennett Square. So we are new neighbors as of September 19th. We're bringing about 120 uh, people to the area, uh, and we're very excited about, uh, about moving here. Um, also very excited about this program. Uh, being in the construction uh, services, we've always struggled to uh, have a workforce. Um, now, just about every industry is going through that uh, struggle with the great resignation or the great rethink or wh whatever you, you want to call it. Um, but helping students figure out what path they want um, will only benefit us as a company. We, we uh, very successful in the apprenticeship program in Delaware, and we find that those younger people who we get into our programs wind up uh, or uh, become employees, become more loyal employees, and we have long-term employees. Um, so we're very excited about being a part of this. Um, it's not just educating the students, though. It's also educating the parents, um, because sometimes the parents think that their kid has to go to college or get in some other field, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, so it's us changing up. And listen, I'm, I'm the same, right? I have two little girls, and my thought was always, got to get that paper, got to get that paper. I don't believe that anymore. I believe we got to find out what really helps them earn a living or what makes them happy. Um, so when uh, Dr. Barber came to me to talk to, uh, about this program, it took me about 30 seconds in my head just to say, yes, I want to be part of this. So thanks for having me. If you would have spoke up in 30 seconds, it would have saved me a meal. <laughs> It was a good meeting. We're, we're, we're excited to have M. Davis on board, not only as a, as a community partner with our, our round table, but also in the community as well. Welcome, and it's great to have you. Thanks, and uh, I do want to say my first day back to school, I already learned a new word, chitting. So <laughs> I'm taking that back to my kids. Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and speak. Uh, my name is Joey Corrado. Uh, with Corrado Construction. Uh, we're a 77-year-old site work development company. Um, we do underground utilities, move the earth, paving, a lot of stuff that you don't see that gets covered up, but it, um, it, it's there. Uh, I got asked to be um, part of this um, when we weren't even in the buildings. Um, it was in the fall of 2020. Dr. Blakely was, I was introduced to him by a mutual friend, uh, Dave Tiberi, who we've done a lot of stuff in the business community of Delaware. And Dave, knowing that this is my hometown and everything, I'm a, I'm a third graduate, uh, third generation graduate from Kennett. Um, my grandfather was in the sophomore class when the building opened. Um, I have three kids, uh, a fifth grader and a second grader at Greenwood, and then a, the, uh, I'll have a kindergarten in this building or a kid in this school next year. So obviously this area and school means quite a bit to myself and family. So, you know, anything that we can do and help out, there is a lot of words that were used here, passion, excitement, special place, um, the commingling between departments and the degree programs was asked. That's how all our businesses have grown and gotten strengthened over the years. You had you started with a idea, but it was this, you know, coming together and, you know, just the, the short time, the two and two and a half years. I mean, we went from, you know, small meetings on Zoom sessions to, you know, we can't fit in the den anymore outside the library because we needed bigger space. It's been great to see, you know, everyone coming together on it. I don't want to use the same words and taglines, but it, it, it really did it, um, hit home with what, how everyone was describing it. So i um, real excited to be a part of it. And you know, as Mike said, being in the construction industry or whatever, um, even before um, COVID hit, the average age of our trades was 53 to 57 years old. And every two going out, only one was coming in. So that math was off big disproportionately a long time ago. So anything that we can do now is to encourage it is, would be beneficial. So one of the big uh, aha moments for me in some of our meetings was to hear, um, you know, Mr. Corrado, Mr. Go Martin, talk a little bit about 
the opportunities within the construction field. And I think Mr. McCabe, um, who is also one of our partners, uh, frequently reminds us that not only are they a construction company, but they have a lot of different opportunities within that construction company, like most uh, businesses do. So uh, Dr. Garrett's question was specifically about potential internships. So could our business partners talk a little bit about maybe what you see as potential internships within your field? Yeah, uh, I'll take this one because there, there's a lot. Um, uh, you know, it's not just construction. It's not just trades people or crafts people, um, which we would gladly participate in that. But there's accounting, there's human resources, there's engineering, there's estimating, um, there's IT. So there's a lot that goes into running a business. You know, we have a total of 450 employees. We need assistance in, in all those fields. And I'm speaking um, on behalf of Kendall Crossens. We're a huge organization, 550 acres of different variety of, you know, jobs, um, talking from grounds, maintenance, plumbers, uh, internships with certified nursing assistants, uh, registered nurses, nurse practitioners. I mean, I'm talking all kinds of um, culinary cooks, first line cooks, second line cooks. Um, this whole um, area can definitely use a lot of those types of internships that we're happy to, to work with. Yeah, to your point, um, there's a lot that goes into making a fire department or an EMS department successful. Um, and a lot of it is the back end things that I don't think a lot of uh, students or what we call rookies, prob probationary members, um, really get exposure to. Um, and I think that the earlier that we do that, the better leaders they'll become in the future. So I think talking to them about leadership and talking to them about, you know, how to be the best um, captain or how to be the best EMS lieutenant um, is something that would be valuable for everybody. And I think that there's definitely potential there. I would add that, um, can you hear me? Yeah. In the park, um, I attend borough council meetings on occasion and uh, township board of supervisor meetings. I write a lot of grant proposals and I think that there is an opportunity for students to um, get exposure to that aspect of the business world and the community to see if maybe they want to go into the nonprofit sector. Um, everybody looks at things differently but sometimes it's the corporate world meets the municipal um, experience. And then we have a, a supporting nonprofit to try and do fundraising to, to pay for the strategic um, plans that we have. So it's, it's, it's not just that four year college prep thing anymore. Great, thank you. Um, if we go to, I think the next slide, I know we can come back to the article, but I wanted to put up our business partners uh, slide real quick so people can see uh, the growth of the program. So if we go one more, there we go, thank you. And you can see uh, all of the different business partners that we have from um, you know, accountants and financial folks, construction, uh, South Bill Mushroom, uh, the Kennedy Square Golf Club, Data Connect X and Yolanda is a, a big part of our group uh, as well. The police, fire, um, you can see Longwood. We have a number of business partners that are, are sitting members of our business roundtable. We're so fortunate to have them. But one of the things I thought was very interesting uh, is a parent and a member of our committee is uh, Ms. Chris Gabbard. And if you would indulge me for a minute, she had couldn't be here tonight, but had some really poignant comments uh, to some of the things that, that Joey was talking about, right? And, and, and community partnerships, collaboration, workforce development, hands-on experience, real-world application. And, and her comments, I think, uh, provide a great synopsis and summary for, for the things that we're trying to accomplish here in the school district. It says, my name is Chris Gabbard. I'm the chief marketing officer at Chatham Financial. I've been involved with the Pathways and Partnerships program for a bit over a year, working toward bring, bringing together perspectives and collaboration between Chatham and Kenna Consolidated Schools. Although I also get the experience, the Pathways program is a parent of a freshman and KMS sixth grade student. In that time I've been part of the program, there are a few concepts that have struck me as distinctly beneficial. Number one, real world thinking. This program has the ability to bridge the gap of theory to reality and can help both the students as well as the employers working to understand the Gen Z mentality, truly prepare 
uh, our, our folks for the future with open eyes. Uh, competitiveness. In the Littleton, Colorado School District, where Chatham also has an office, one of the schools is building a large physical facility and massive curriculum to enable the program of the same name, Pathways Degree Programs, uh, in both degree and vocational future tracks. Chatham recently endowed the program, knowing uh, continuing a commitment we've always had for supporting our communities through education. I note this because in our local area, when I talk with parents and educators from other schools about what Kennan is doing, they are impressed with the Pathways program, citing they wish that this is happening in their schools and communities. I think it gives our, our kids the type of competitive edge they need both in the, the advanced education and workplace worlds. Uh, I also think the Pathways program for students will directly help them develop a future looking mindset and confidence earlier on that will help them choose a better fitting uh, track post-graduation and lessen the missteps so many grads make these days. And lastly, drive. One definition of professional drive is the combination of reaching mastery in an area combined with autonomy and a sense of purpose. And that's really what we're trying to instill in our students, a sense of purpose. Exposing students to what is all out there and possible in the working world at this stage can help them find and accomplish drive faster and more effectively in their lives. What a huge benefit to the kids in our district as they learn both generalist and specialist concepts at this stage of development. So uh, I think Chris has done a wonderful job of sort of providing that summary for us and what we're trying to, to accomplish and our purpose. So thank you, Dr. Collins. Thank you, Ms. Perry. I think we want to go back to your article. So um, I'm not going to open the article, but this is for your reference. And I think one of the things that we have heard this evening from everyone, and then we'll open it up for even more questions, is how do we prepare our students for the post-secondary world? And so the integrated approach is what is recommended and it is what's coming as we do um, standards overhaul with next gen science standards that cross cuts into literature, social sciences, and into the business area as well as mathematics. Um, so as we move forward, we've heard from all of our business partners that the integrated learning approach is also what's important to employees and for our students as they prepared for post college or even post high school work. Um, so this is why this partnership, and our, we've heard from our teachers too, how they're naturally integrating across subjects. Um, so that is a change uh, from Ms. Perry's comment earlier to standalone subjects to more of an integrated movement, uh, which will take time too, but it's nice to be on the cutting edge of it in Kennet. Um, so I wanted to just um, say that this article really speaks to that and the need to move our students from siloed thinking to an integrated cross uh, approach across content. Um, so I just wanted to, that's for your reference. We won't, I won't bore you with a reading activity, but um, that's for you to reference. So, and I'll go back, I'll put this up, but at this time I'll open it up to any further questions for anyone that anyone has. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I was at the homecoming parade and I saw um, a former babysitter of my kids and she just graduated and is in Drexel and she applied for the co-op program, which sounds eerily similar to what we're talking about. Universities are starting to get students into the workplace and do internships and co-ops much earlier because they see that need for the connection with the career that students are being prepared for. And she said the fact that she had done an internship was one of the determining factors that the reason she got placed in the co-op program. Um, so already, and I, of course, we know this, but when you hear it from a young person and you know that this drive was rewarded and that they had an opportunity to specialize and go forward with what their passion is, that's really what this is about and whether it's college bound and specializing and you know continuing to learn for 10 plus years <laughs> or my husband is a diesel mechanic and he you know he that was his passion and he I think there's many different ways of being successful and that's what our mission statement says you know we were trying to create a path to success um, and it really, I just, I'm really impressed by the way everyone is kind of thinking in the same 
way, whether it be in the workplace or in school. And the question I've been getting to is, do our teachers, you know, I'm thinking about what training do you feel like you need or connections that you need with these internships to make them successful? Um, I know that the partners are working on a rubric, right? Because I feel like you know what you need. <laughs> we just need to get the kids there. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to the like seeing the rubric and hearing some feedback to see. I know that we'll have like some soft skill development. You know, how do you write an email? How do you address a superior? You know, like um, just what we think is common sense, but the kids have never learned. <laughs> um, especially being out of school for a couple of years, their social skills are severely lacking. Um, so that's. I'm looking forward to getting that bit of information from the degree partners or from the business partners so that then the teachers know where we need to go. So during our last meeting, I will thank all of our business partners and we were going to put the slide up, but then we held off in its draft format. So you can see all of the conversation and the potential changes to the initial rubric that we had at our last meeting, but we will be coming forward with uh, a completed draft rubric for the committee's review, as well as sending that to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for approval, uh, because we would like to uh, issue credits for internships as well. So we're working with uh, Dr. Tanya Garcia, the acting deputy of post-secondary education at PDE as well. I'd love to follow up on something that Gretchen said, if I could. Um, well, first, actually before that, I just wanna say, uh, I, as somebody who was lucky to be part of the year one group. I went to a lot of the meetings with the initial business partners and everything. And this list is, it's crazy. I, I mean, it's more than double, maybe triple what we started with. I mean, and that's, that, that really, I think speaks to how attractive this program is to the community. I really do. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know that I have an answer to your question in terms of training, but I did want to piggyback on something that Gretchen said about like the, the internships and soft skills. One of the, the most eye-opening things to me has been the conversations that we've had the opportunity to have with the business partners at our at our committee meetings, um, especially when it came to internships, because we were able to to really like say like, all right, we're going to send an eleventh grader to you. What do you need them to be able to do? Not like what like not construction skills or things like that, but like what do you need? How do you need them prepared when they get to you? And we talked about things like writing an appropriate email about how students don't actually talk on the phone anymore. So how do you answer the phone when when somebody call like when a business call comes in? And we just had really great conversations that were also eye-opening about these soft skills and about just like preparing kids for a professional world. But but honestly, like one of the things that dawned on me as we were having these conversations is of course our pathways kids need to know these. They're gonna go into these internships. But the rest of the kids in the building, whether they're in a pathway or not, need to know these things too. And do we need to start rethinking like what ninth grade looks like at, at Kennedy, you know, like, and, and like integrate, maybe not necessarily like go as far as a freshman academy necessarily, but like, do we need to integrate some of these soft skills into ninth grade curriculums? And like, we had just like conversations I had with other teachers and administrators after having these conversations with the business partners was very eye opening. And so like, I think, that's just this, this extra layer of reward that we've had bringing this program here is not only are our pathway students going to benefit from this, but I think all of our kids will in the end, because we're seeing, we're seeing where there might be gaps that we hadn't thought of because we're not business people, you know, and I, I think that's been interesting. I think that's what I was getting to is that, you know, I'm also an educator. I originally studied biology, but that was long ago. And I think it's a great opportunity to update, you know, and to really see what are the skills that are needed. Some of them are soft skills that we definitely don't think about teaching explicitly, but as you're saying, like this is in going to inform, you know, and then we think about how do we teach that? How do we incorporate that? So it's really exciting that you're already thinking about those connections. I would just add to that too, I think one of, the, one of the things that we're working on as a school is also collaborative teams, but this has also now become one of those things that 
if we're focusing on real world educational experiences, we also have to have that time to talk with all of you so that we're, we're able to then make this a, a more collaborative process as well. Well, I think that's, to me, the training question was answered. Like I, because, and we've been in a, a lot of different partnerships there over the years. And one of the things that was instant gravity to this one was, you said it, that teachers teach. It's, we've learned that as parents, especially over the last couple of years, you know, trying to teach our own kids at home. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, we want to get back to work. Yeah, there's a reason for it. But from that, it, it, what, you know, what you're good at, what, what you're, what your background and what your passion is and and how to do it and what has been great in the short time we'll come up with ideas and it's like all right business partners what do you think on this I, like from your mindset of it and then it's like okay and then we're kicking it back and it's like oh, all right well that's not really how students are learning or not learning and you know the safety aspects and everything else that what we can get them trained your cprs and hazmats and everything else you, you're talking about real estate degree by graduation kind of an answers the intern or the co-op question also you can integrate that, that word's been thrown around a, a ton tonight also um you know all these different skills and so when they come out or when they're graduated you know, their background, yes, if it's if it's secondary education, secondary schooling, or from a business standpoint, you know, they, they, they have a maturity level to it. They, we have an aspect of when they when they come in, there's there's a baseline of skills that we don't have to start over and train again. Um, so I do think, you know, it, it's kind of the how they were. Scott and Gretchen were answering the question. I'm just sitting over here. I'm like, well, that, yeah, 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 that, that, that is, that's what's been so great about it. I'll stop mumbling. The, the, the one skill that we could teach the kids is work ethic. And I don't, I, maybe passion, enthusiasm gets behind that, but that's what we need, work ethic. I just remember one of our meetings, um, it was really funny. They said, you know, kids don't even know how to dress anymore, given the pandemic. Um, they were doing, you know, virtual school and came in, you know, when we were back in classes in pajamas. And it's funny because I do do a lot of interviews for um, where I work and it's just crazy to know, you know, it's very natural to us to know, but these are the things they lack. So the skills are definitely really important. Um, I also wanted to touch base on the dual credits. Um, I graduated with the 15 college credits. I was the first class to do that at kind of high school um, where they had a seat saved for me in nursing school and I was able to save on a semester of college. Now nursing, we had a certain curriculum so we couldn't, I couldn't do that, but I was, instead of being in those classes for all semester, I was able to study abroad. Um, to London and Paris in, in the interim that I had those credits done in high school. So such a big impact, lots of opportunities there. And definitely if we could do dual credits, that would be awesome. Absolutely. And it's one of the, uh, uh, it's a vision that we have for each program is to partner with a university to provide those dual enrollment credits within each program, um, similar to what we've done with the teacher pipeline. Uh, media communications, maybe we're going to partner with Temple University, who is the, the leader in the field um, that we can continue to provide those opportunities, especially if you look at our current uh, teacher partnership, I will tell you that the cost um, that we have partnered through Westchester University, some grants and donors is free. So um, we are looking at other opportunities to obtain, whether it's six, seven, 12, 24. My goal is 24. Uh, Dr. Blakey knows this. I want a full year of college credit for $2,000 or less for all of our students and have that opportunity. So, um, so absolutely, we are definitely on that page. I, I did want to take, before I forget or we break up, I did want to take an opportunity to recognize Dr. Ritz. Um, Dr. Ritz, when Dr. Blakey came here and started talking about some of the vision that uh, we had for this program. Dr. Ritz is the one who, who said, you know, I, I'm ready. I'm on board. I'm going to take, take the ball and I'm going to run. And he really did a great job of providing that foundation uh, for us. We can't do this without incredibly passionate and committed teachers, as well as community business partners. So it is essential that those relationships exist and remain strong. 
Um, and our meetings, we promised an hour. So far, we've been pretty good we're not going over an hour um, once a month, but it, it, that hour is productive. Um, and we get in and we work. And, uh, you know, now we're at the point now where, where Dr. DeAngelis and, and his administrative team can take the ball and be ready, uh, as well as that counselor to move and continue to push us forward uh, in collaboration with all of us who are here this evening. And I think we've really set the school district and, and the high school uh, specifically. And like Dr. Collins said, the teaching and learning team is, is looking at ways to move down into the, to the middle grades and, and ultimately the elementary exposure as well. So I just wanted to thank everybody before we, we broke up and ended this evening um, for all of your, your partnership, your thoughts, your leadership, and your commitment. Thank you, Dr. Barber. I, I'm going to piggyback on a lot of those thoughts. Um, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Collins and Ms. Perry and, and your peers in the administration team, because this is very thought provoking. And the curriculum committee for the last couple of meetings has been very thought provoking. So thank you for that. Yeah, it, it's, it's not reading and writing and arithmetic tonight, right? And it, it's, it's very interesting stuff that we're talking about here. And what I sense from everyone as in hearing your thoughts is the sense of community. We're all in the same place. We're all working together. And I really appreciate that. So thank you all for your efforts in, in recognizing both how special Kennet is, but the special things that the students need in order to move to their next steps. And when I hear that, you know, a median age is 50 plus and two people are leaving for every one person who comes in, that's not limited to your business. That's, that's all yeah. over. And so whatever we can do uh, as a community to help our students find their place and find their happy place um, is very much appreciated. So again, thank you for bringing this to, to the board, to the curriculum committee meeting. And I look forward to hearing about it for years to come. I forgot to mention that there's a lot of lettuce over there. <laughs> please take a bag. There's romaine, there's butterhead, and there's bags of rainbow Swiss chard too. So please take a bag or two home. <laughs> I tried to talk her into bringing her whole container up here. She's like, no, I'm not, but it's in the back. <laughs> Any other questions for our business partners, our teachers? Can I add, um, I know that you mentioned that there were some other science teachers that were helpful to the ag program. Um, we do have 4,400 linear feet of the Red Clay, Creek, Red Clay Creek and tributaries in the park that were recently restored with um, grant money. And we've spoken with some folks over at Stroud about doing educational programs in the park. And I think if you have somebody who's interested in that kind of science, I'll pass it on. It's right here in our backyard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess. I, 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 okay. I have one last question. Just, we, we've been thinking about um, the strengths of our bilingual multicultural community in Kennet. And I wanted to hear from some of you how, how what's the benefit of being bilingual in this area? And, how does that, how do you see that merging with what you're doing in the school? <laughs> so um, I guess I can start, I am bilingual, um, Spanish, obviously. Um, it is something that I think I always underrepresented myself um, because it was never something that um, I didn't think I ever needed it. But growing up, of course, and being in the community, we are, if we look at our statistics, we are, you know, with that popula population, minorities um, is big around this area and, and a lot of different areas as well. But we have to focus on not only being able to speak, it's not all about speaking two languages, it's also immerse, immerse, uh, immersing ourselves into the community. Um, it's a great benefit. I, I mean, I wish everybody was bilingual. Um, it's 
it's something so strong. I think it's always been, Kenneth has always been respectful. Um, it's always been appreciative um, of different cultures, heritages, um, languages. Um, myself, for just a personal note, I, you know, used to live in Delaware for eight years and I specifically moved back into PA in this area because I felt so comfortable and my kids, I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, I want my kids to grow up the same way that I did with the support and the, you know, the teachers and just having the same opportunities that I did um, in this community. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's an amazing thing to have as a background. Um, I know a lot of our students um, may struggle. I know we have support and I did from Mr. O'Sullivan. Um, I had a lot of support from Mrs. Perna. Um, just great programs that they sponsor that, you know, had it not been for those two in particular teachers, my parents, um, even if they wanted to, they couldn't help me. So I think putting more emphasis on the programs that they do, for example, when, um, you know, after school tutoring, I know those programs may seem sometimes, you know, not so important, but they're the most important, I think, for a lot of of the students who are growing up, so. Um, so in EMS, I feel like a lot of our experiences um, could be improved if we had um, that transfer of knowledge from internship, like 16 year old, 17 year old observing, that would be like such a force multiplier for our um, ability to provide service. Um, in addition, I think it would get them exposure um, to fire and EMS which is a really fun field. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I think that that's definitely one of the areas of um, opportunity that I've identified in our um, organization. Um, I think that was one of the first questions I asked was, how are we gonna market this so that we have an inclusive program? Um, because that's where I see a major deficit across the board with Southern Chester County um, with respect to public safety. Um, speaking from a classroom perspective, um, last spring I was able to, it wasn't like the true intro to ag course that I ran. It was, we called it an independent study and I could try out a whole bunch of stuff. And um, eight of my, uh, no, nine of my 18 students were newcomers and they came with a translator, but um, they didn't speak a word of English. However, their backgrounds were agriculture rich. And so, they would try so hard. They practice with the um, the aid, like the radish is good. And I'd be like, yes, the radish is good. And then I'd like ask them how to say it in Spanish because I'm not bilingual, but I try very hard. So I struggle to speak in Spanish because they struggle to speak in English. And I wanted them to see that, that it was okay. And we were all learning. And I was really able to um, take their life experiences that they could share through the translator and connect it to our class. Um, even things like we took a field trip to New Bolton Center and the, um, the uh, pigs who had just given birth, they're ginormous and they're separated by this bar so that they can't lay on the babies. And um, the kids were like, they don't lay on the babies. And I'm like, but at home, you're, they're in a big pen, right? They're in this big space and at New Bolton Center, they're in this little thing, so it's different. So it was neat to like compare experiences and to, um, share language, even though I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but it's important. It's an important connection to make with our community. Yeah, I would say I, in semester two, I believe there's two students that were in what's now our newcomer academy that are in the courses as well. So it is something where um, the students have that opportunity and their their skill set is something that I think as as a staff we're we're recognizing the asset that comes with that so hoping that they're they're continued parts of the program as well yeah that's great that we're i mean that wealth of experience is also a bridge to learn language and it's that's really neat well thank you i think i'm going to turn this over to dr collins unless mm -hmm. you have any other comments or questions okay oh okay okay um let me make sure I can get to where I am going here. 
Okay. So I just wanted to share, um, I just wanted to say thank you to this entire, um, this, this is um, our second committee like this, and it has been um, pretty awesome to just have conversation, to have this um, uh, talking about our progress in Kennett. Um, so I wanted to say um, thank you, and I wanted to say um, thank you to Cheryl Kuhn. Um, she has also been a part of this. She couldn't be here this after this evening, um, but from Southern Chester um, County um, Chamber of Commerce. And so she has really helped us along the way too with even getting surveys out and, and, and pulling in more partners. So um, it's been an awesome partnership. Um, so in case anyone would like to come to another one next month, <laughs> I'm gonna put a plug in for next month. Next month is our one of our, what we're calling our quarterly report on our balanced scorecard, which is our district's goals um, that we have set forth for this year. And you will hear a report out for all of our goals of where we are and how we're progressing on that. Um, so next month will be um, action packed. We will do that three, uh, almost four times a year, which is really awesome. So you'll get to see the progress that we're making as a district and um, data broken, our student data broken out also by overall proficiency, but by demographic. So we'll be able to look at that as well. So I wanted to put that plug in. Um, and I know someone else has, the so this is the progress we'll learn about next month, um, just so everyone knows. Um, this year, our goals revolve around our multi-tiered system of support. That's what MTSS is. And we're focusing in on tier one, which is instruction for all students. Um, so that this year we're leveraging all of our high yield instructional strategies. We're also gonna focus on our second goal, which will be professional learning community, which you all just participated in. Congratulations. Um, and so you'll hear how the district's progressing um, in those areas and also climate and culture um, in our district as well, as well as our other um, areas. So we'll hear from HR, we will hear from our business area, we will hear from technology, we'll hear from facilities how and communications, how we're all progressing in those areas and student services. So um, next month will be an awesome um, discussion just like this. Do you wanna add anything on? Thank you, Dr. Collins. Since this is a formal district meeting, I wanted to take a moment to recognize that today was not a normal day for the district. And to appreciate the kind of middle school community who had to go through an unexpected day today as well as the Kennedy administration and law enforcement partners who worked just about around the clock to, to try and understand the issue. Uh, I know that an email went out a few minutes ago, well, a couple hours ago at this point, but uh, I, I just want to appreciate both the community and the work that our staff did. Uh, Dr. Barber, feel free to chime in if there's anything you want to add. But uh, thank you to, especially to our families, because this was not an easy day for our families. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. And I, I would echo the same sentiments that, um, you know, our staff, uh, Mr. Moore, who's, who's here this evening, um, um, Ms. Laws, the entire administrative team, um, and our, uh, our partners in local law enforcement, many of you saw uh, up on the board this evening, have just uh, really going above and beyond to make sure our community and our kids are safe and we're appreciative of all their efforts. Um, and we're always going to act in an abundance of caution. Um, and that's our responsibility to make sure that everybody is safe. And I just want to commend Mr. Moore, uh, his team, as well as the, the, the district wide administrative team and our partners in law enforcement for the work that they have done to make sure that, that we are safe. Thank you. Yeah, as a parent of a middle school student, I can say that I was really impressed at, at the response and at the safety protocols that happened. And um, I just wanna say like the fact that you're here at a meeting after hours, after the day that you had, thank you so much because this really does give me hope and a lot of families hope that we keep going and we are still keeping our eye on um, the work, um, despite some, you know, bad news and setbacks that we had today. Um, anyway, with that, everyone have a good night. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thank you, Thank you everyone.